ayakum andatu bu minu ayu wa kum gara ya kum wata talu talu le sari ke zel watan zel watan zel nain mane su zel watan zel watan zel nain mane su ota Zel watan, zel watan, zel man manaisu, zel watan manaisu. Otal, talu 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 le tari, butal. Oh, ya ummati al Ghazi, ya ummati Sudan na tar, talu talu le tari. Zel watan, zel watan, zel nain manaisu. Beladi beladun, kadiru kairat, kiu kulo sarwat, azraiya wal haywani wal miadin. Fakifa kun jan, wakifa kun arian, wakifa kun mardan, bedun dawa. Ten states, three administrative areas, one nation, one people. Welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. This week on Fixing South Sudan, the nation commemorates the 39th anniversary of the founding of the SPLA, SPLM. Each 16th May, we remember the sacrifices of the SPLA heroes and heroines. In this forum, we explore the participation of the people of Abia in the liberation of South Sudan. When did Abia's sons and daughters join the struggle for liberty in the SPLA War of Independence from 1983 to 2005? And who were the SPLA Abia warriors joining us in the forum ambassador engineer Choldeng Alak veteran SPLA commander a pleasure to welcome to this program welcome to the show Thank you. also joining us is major general Dr. Kual Deng Kual director of administration central area command Bill Palm SSPDF general headquarters Headquarters. Welcome to the show. Yeah, also joining us is Ambassador Dr. Rob Denkwal, CEO Triangle Real Estate and former Ambassador to Ethiopia and also a revolutionary in his own right. Pleasure to welcome you to the show, sir. Thank you. And last but not least is Brigadier General Kwal Nyong Kwal, Shiptancy Military Intelligence and Director of the Strategic Intelligence SSPDF General Headquarters, Bill Farm. Thanks for coming to the show. Welcome to all of you, and what we are speaking about is a history that many people don't know that the ABA has been part and parcel of the revolution from the very beginning, even before the formation of the SPLA, SPLM. And I would like to begin with you, sir, because you are one of the earlier people to join the movement. Take us back to when the struggle began and how it began in your area. The SPLA was made up of different groups, different formations, different experiences. The people of Abia nonetheless had their own experience of engaging with their neighbors. There has been conflict over time. Welcome to the program. Thank you, uh, Comrade Madin Ngor. Thank you very much. Uh, and I am also pleased that it is you, him, namely, who is doing this uh, interview with us. Uh, being a member of the Red Army uh, and being uh, also born in that uh, sensational, uh, that particular date, the birth of SPLA goes together with the birth of your own birthday. Thank you. Uh, yay, uh, that small place uh, north of uh, 
Baragazal, borders between Sudan and South Sudan today, and by then it was between Kordofan and South and and, and Bar -el Ghazal. That place, as most of the people are aware, was transferred in 1905 to become part of administration of, Kor of Kordofan. Later on, uh, the other areas which were transferred together with it came back to South Sudan, and that was some Tuj area, uh, uh, Panaru. Uh, they made their way back to, to South Sudan, what today is South Sudan. Uh, Pariang to to Bantu and uh, and Tuj area back to to Tony. Actually, Tony was our uh, district when Abia was transferred to to to, to Kordofan. Now uh, this transfer, uh, which uh, which was not actually in good, uh, because of good things which were happening, it was because of a solution to a problem which people were facing. Uh, now, with the coming of the rest of the, those areas which were transferred to, to, to the north together with ABA, uh, ABA was the only place left uh, with all the difficulties faced being part of the north. Uh, and it has always been uh, a hope of people of ABA that they rejoin uh, their uh, kins and and back to uh, in, in, uh, in, in South Sudan, or what is now known as Republic of South Sudan. So uh, they were always conscious in all the liberation struggle about this being part of the people, integral part of the people of South Sudan, not only being Dinka, but also being people of generally what is known as part, part people of South Sudan. And they fought. Uh, the, all the liberation movement, starting with the Nyanya one, uh, uh, with the settlement of, uh, Nyanya, uh, of, uh, of the Addis Ababa agreement, IBA case was left, a referendum was set to, should supposed to take place. It did not happen. Of course, it was denied. I would, I would want to be brief uh, that, uh, to give you that part for you, maybe it is something not everybody was aware about, but this is it, this is what happened. Uh, referendum did not take place and atrocities while North and South enjoyed uh, relative stability and democracy and better life, ABA was left in cool and it was really suffering, paying very high price. From the very beginning, the people of ABA have been suffering at the hands of the neighbors and that colored the experience of ABA to join a liberation struggle. Yeah, uh, surely. And even before uh, intensification, between, with the, say with the, uh, with the, with the, with the first Anyanya, or first uh, liberation movement of Anyanya, uh, ABA didn't have a very particular uh, uh, peculiarities, which to say, but still because they believe they are part of, uh, of the people of the Republic of South Sudan today, they, they, they participated very actively in the early command, and we, we had people like uh, Akonon Mithyang, uh, uh, Cesar Ayok, uh, Deng Aichwal. These were very renowned uh, officers which were known in Anyanya, and many, many other people uh, were known were, 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 who participated in this war. Anyway, with ABA's case not settled, no referendum, and atrocities continued. Uh, we found that we had to work. We tried to approach it politically here and there. I was by then, uh, uh, at the beginning I was here working as a journalist in Radio Juba. Then I, I, I went back to education, uh, Soviet Union. And by the time we came, we had to, we, we found that the situation was even going worse. And we had opened many uh, ways of trying to, how to get the solution. And one of them was that we were forced to defend ourselves uh, against aggression, which started especially in 65, when uh, banning of the people, uh, houses, and uh, killing, kidnapping, uh, uh, real atrocities in the real sense in those days. Uh, and our people found they had no option except to, to pick at arms. 
And uh, let me we, hear more about yes. self-defense and how it was organized. Yeah, yeah, uh, because uh, the government of Sudan, uh, even back to time of uh, late Sadiq Al Mahdi, uh, organized a militia uh, to come to fight in a, in a, in a Bay area. And the idea was to dislodge the people from their land and uh, take the properties. Uh, that, 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 that theme never ended up, even with the time of Nimeri, when Nimeri was in power. Uh, there were all these people now trying to, uh, the fight was there. And I remember in 1980, 1980 he, uh, I want to shift somewhat to Arabic because uh, it seems people are not, will not be following all. في سنة 1980 بالذات الوضع بقى بقى بطال في أبيه وحتى هجوم حصل ومشاركة بتاع الجيش مع مراهلين and by the way المحل أبيه ده هو المحل افتكر ظهر فوق التجربة بتاع مراهلين وكان في نوعين من المراهلين مراهلين في حاجة اسمه متراحلين مراهلين سابتة في مراحلين مترحلة مع مع العرب كويس to protect them just imagine they have the protection of the عندهم حماية من الدولة وفي against ناس معزل ما عندهم أي حاجة أبي أي population تبي ده has been disarmed many times فالمهم want to say إنه resistance was the most yeah so form of resistance yes so anyway في سنة ثمانين ده Tango magang wajang wam, which hit places magang wajang wam hasal fiu maraka anif jidden, o istushat enda na adet kabir mena nas, mazam nas na kan endom shuno, ma kan endom yau horap o shuayet wahed silahed nenta lata al gatom lakin al misiria be qiyad abtaat wujesh wujesh sudani be qiyad abtaat wahed ahmed أحمد أحمد الباشا لما أحمد الباشا على ما أعتقد they were there and they fought against us in spite of this شوف كيني على جلوي الدنيا ده ما بخير لأنه الزيز ذول عنده حق ده بينتصر حتى في أضعف الظروف بعد ده عندنا شهداء لكن الانتصار كان لصالح نوع وقدر to to repulse these people من يوم ذاك الناس ابتدت تفكر و وكان عندنا حاجة اسمه أبي أي ليبريشن موفمنت وكان عندنا اكتيفيتيز عشان بعد لأنه بقى في موضوع بتاع السجون وناس دايرين يدخلوهم السجون عمر محمد الطيب was running after us left to right. Thank you for this intervention. Yeah. We will come back to your own story. Yeah. And now we are going to go to the next uh, panelist. But let's just take a break. <laughs> Yeah. 
فنان المزيقى يا نجنوب الدين Major General uh, Dr. Kual De Kual, I would like to bring you in here. We are speaking on, about the BA, the contribution to the struggle. And I would like to go back to history. Uh, General Chol, talk about the resistance that began in the BA area. Uh, you can have a take about how the uh, joining the SPLA began in the BA area. Welcome. So, Shukran for having us as a son of a BA. Uh, in fact, the liberation is struggling. He started in the BA long time ago. People of BA were fighting not to liberate themselves as such from the start. Our fight was to come back to South Sudan. As uh, General Dr. George said before, that ABA was taken to Kurdofan in 1905. Our aspiration all along has been how to come back to South Sudan. And in fact, we start with this one, specifically in 1964, uh, 1964, where we started effectively, and I think. The whole Baragazad started at that time. The son of a BA fought in the war, Anyanya. Anyanya won war. The agreement was reached. They were given a right of plebiscite. That was not implemented. And in fact, there was relative peace in South Sudan, but the BA never witnessed the peace. They continue fighting, although it was not a big scale war that involved government directly, it's a but it was a war that between two tribes. But the other tribes had the advantage of being supported by the government of Sudan by then. We continue that struggle. The Messerian. The Messerian. And in fact, uh, Although we were small during one, uh, but in the 80s and 70s, 
we have witnessed the atrocities and the fight, the struggle of people we have witnessed. We have one of our heroes that got killed, Ho Lung Yoi. In fact, he started it early, and he was killed before anyone has, like in other martyrs, that got killed. Uh, in 81, in fact, Mio Koledeng started to move out. And it was a trigger with the small thing, intervention of the government in the affair. There were some officers who might have been following the policies of government of Sudan, or they might have been acting on their own, but they were not fair on treating people of Michael Miochan left the BA in 81, and in fact, formed formally Anyanya 2 in Baradal in 82. So this is where people of the BA started to rebel against the government officials in 82. Uh, those of PN joined later in 83, before SPLA could rebel, they have already formed Anyanya 2. You see. Uh, our people were the early people who rebelled in the SPLA struggle. Commander Chol Dengalak were one of the pioneers. Those of Dengalor, Paul Bitti, they were there early. You see. If, if we say there are those who form the SPLA, we can say they are the founder of the SPLA as well. Would you say that there was a recognition in the BIA that they cannot do it alone, that it is bigger than yeah. the BIA? Yeah, they start was that the BIA cannot do it alone. And that's why always we see the movement in the south, the trend. But the BIA has to continue defending themselves from the atrocities of Missouri and all that. We didn't say it was the government, but we know government was behind Missouri. You see. Yeah. Thank you for that intervention. And let me hear uh, from Ambassador Dr. Arup Denkwal on the story of a BIA from the start. Well, uh, thank you, Madingor. And uh, once, uh, let me say first, uh, happy birthday for yourself and for the SPLM. Uh, because the 16th May is your birthday, and it is the birthday of the SPLM, SPLA. Uh, getting into a BIA history of a struggle, uh, I would rather go beyond, and it is in the history. Uh, traditional histories and the songs are there. The BIA people have been the front line of South Sudan from the start and the inception of South Sudan. In 1820s when Al Mahdi started, there was a slavery. And in the slavery, the BIA people started to work against the slavery. And two chiefs left the BIA Arobiung and Alora Jing to go and liberate uh, southerners who were slaves and they were taken to Umdurman. And when they went there, they talked to Al Mahdi after the revolution. And they were uh, asked, What are you coming for? And he said, We, have, we need all the black people that had been taken as a slave. And Al Mahdi says, uh, We will not give you now. He has to negotiate uh, where are they coming from and where is their locations, and they must pay allegiance to Al Mahdi first. And they were asked to go for a prayer in Islamic prayer, and there are traditional people coming. <laughs> for when they went for prayers, uh, uh, the history says, while they were praying down, one of the chiefs, Alora Jing, asked Arobiung, and he said, have you seen the God? And he said, for the sake of our people, let us pray. 
and, and that is the beginning of the history of the struggle of the people of Abyei. From Al Mahdiya, Abyei was defined as a front line protecting the right of the black people. And they were given all the slaves. And Abyei today, if you go, and uh, we are now working of how to make it uh, one of the memorial places, is called Midrock. Midrock means pull the fence. All the slaves were brought from the, all, all over the south, and they were put in the fence, and now they send the message all over the south so that you come and identify your person. When you identify your person and you get it to see your relative, then they will ask the police to open the fence, uh, pull the fence. That's why the area became called Midrock. Up to today, it's called Midrock. That is the history of that area. And that one continues uh, with the Mahdiya interaction. That goes to what Dr. Chole Anlak and Ambassador, the former Ambassador, have said. From 64, 65, the intensification of war uh, in the age was going back to that history. Uh, there have been frustrations over time. Yes. It wasn't about attaining independence, it was about uh, survival. Survival. And in and, 1964, uh, when the war started, uh, Again, the history of the struggle against the government, the central government, as I said, started with the Mahdi Revolution, came to the Prime Minister Sadiq al Mahdi, who is following his father, trend, seeing that South Sudan was their backyard and therefore they should break through. They continue to, to see ABA as a leadership that if they can convince, then they can make a breakthrough. But the leadership was opposing to that, and that's why the, the fighting continued. When the fighting continued, it is the same Sadiq al Mahdi in his third term or his second term who came and formed what they called Fuad al Murahil. Fuad al Murahil, the Khan Mulakhbat, the police, was Jesh. And they were made intentionally to accompany the Syria so that from uh, the Ngog Binka. So the history of the populations came. Now people have moved away from the slavery and now to the depopulation of the area. A bear conflict got transformed again in 1972 after the Zababa Agreement, when the Zababa Agreement in 1972 uh, awarded the plebiscite for the people of Abiyai. Khartoum was busy to look at how they can occupy the area, not the people. And dismantle, uh, and dismantle the, the area. Uh, and that's where Wadal Marahel was formed in 1975, and the war started between the government and the people. What was the strategic objective of Khartoum to resist to their BA status? Because the Al Mahdiya came when they declared Sudan as Islamic Arab states from the beginning of Sudan, the inception of Sudan, it was to extend the area of the Arabization. And Abiyai being a front line was the weakest part that had been seen that issue. And they were not only wicked part, but they were seen that they were the first people to interact with the Mahdiya. Abiyai, the territory or the people? Or the resources? Well, uh, the questions remind me exactly what uh, Dr. John and Dr. Mordazer is a historian who writes history of Sudan. In 1997, he told Dr. John, you one day will be Arabs. And Dr. John said, why do you think so? He said, we have been knocking at the door and the windows, but the doors and the window have refused. And he asked him, where is the window and where is the door? He says that the window was South Sudan and the door is Ethiopia. But you are resisting. This takes me to ABA. The reasons why the referendum was uh, resisted by Khartoum, they were not only interested in, in ABA, but they interested something that can trigger the war between the south and the north because their interest is the entire south. That is the, that is the interest behind fighting over ABA. And they see that once they attach the people of ABA, then the surrounding will be part of it. And then war will engulf the whole Sudan. That has been decided. That's why they came up with the issue of depopulation in the area. They did not only ABA, Misira don't come to Abiyai only. They go to Awil, they go to Bantu, they go to Parian. But all these areas, they have been fighting all along. 
but they started with Abiai is a central point and number two it was uh, having access to the road because Pariang has been covered by the mountain, Nuba mountain and they cannot come directly the Masira were not having a border with Pariang. And that reality was clear to the people of Abiai that they have to be fight part of the biggest struggle. Exactly. Sure. That's why, as I said, from 18-something, they were talking about the black people, and they know that they understood clearly that they are not a target. Because, after all, they were under them administratively. And there was nothing that wrong. Uh, they were the one controlling. But they were inspiring behind the South. Uh, they're looking for the bigger South. Thank you very much for that intervention. Let me bring in Brigadier General Kual Nyong Kual and Abiyai. Mm -hmm. From the start, what can you say about the history of the struggle that began in Abiy? Welcome. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madin. I also congratulate you for your wonderful birthday <laughs> on the 16 May. Uh, we hope that it will be a blessed day. I will take this question a step further. As mentioned by Ambassador and my colleagues, let me just take it one step further. To be very precise, the rebellions, this is a rebellion, started in Abiyai, as, as my colleague put it. It was on self-defense. And later on, when we are overwhelmed by the Musiria who are backed up by the Sudan government, the people of Abiyai thought also, because they have a belief that thousands are their people. So they wanted also to take it further, to involve the thousands, to help them. So it was started by those of Michael Makwal and uh, those of Bagadabwa rebelled from Sudan Army, came Edward Achui, and many others. And they were accompanied by some of their colleagues. Then it started in Kirkau area. Uh, the first person to join I could remember, was Paul Malong. Paul Malong is our neighbor from Munane. Uh, he came all the way walking and reported to Michael McCall and told him, now I, w I need training. He was trained, and those soldiers who trained him, they are still NCOs now in Kirkov. He was trained and asked Michael McCall, just get me some forces. I, take, I go back to our, our home to start recruiting. Uh, so he was trained and then he was given a platoon to take it to Abiyam and Malong managed to mobilize the weapons who are there, starting from, because by then the weapons were in the hand of chiefs, Chief Dengakwe and the rest. And he managed to form a mobile. And this thing also immediately extended to Western Railway, to Lukalwari, also join in and then the thing started to, to quickly develop. Uh, also, in the 1974 agreement, I mean 1972, the police who are sons of ABA were, were, were expelled from ABA and deployed in Gourial, northern part of Gourial, and then in Birmingham, etc. These polices who are there immediately when Michael Marco rebelled, they also are sharing the rebellions in Gourial. That is a very important point. And then some of from Gaurial also join in, and some from Bimno. Uh, and now, within a very short period, Anyanyatu was formed. And those of Piang now join, and they open up with Malong, a place called Majong Intio, where they buy ammunition and then weapons. Uh, in 1982, I believe Anyanyatu was a very big, a formidable force. That cannot be ignored. And why was it spontaneous? Is it because the experience was all uniform across the rest of Barkazai? The experience yeah. with the, the Sudanese government? Yeah, by that time, the, the, the political situation in South Sudan uh, was in turmoil because of the decision made by, by Nimeri by dividing South Sudan into three regions and then by taking the oil of Bentiu to be refined in Port Sudan and then uh, and declaring this thing called Sharia law. 
So that situation, the political situation was not pro-unity anymore. So most of these people now try to join. Dr. Francis Deng, in one of his books, speak about warriors from ABA. All of you here fought in the war of liberation, the war of independence. Your stories are the stories of people of ABA, like many others who are not in this forum. You begin by talking about your journey to what became Bilfa. Thank you very much. In fact, I rebelled in... Uh, almost in 1981. The rebellion was started by somebody called Kuala Nil. And then he went up to Bill Farm. And then he was dictated. He got the, the situation was very different. He got somebody by name Gordon Kong. And Gordon told him that you go back to your home, bring your weapons, and then we'll observe you, we'll absorb you in the Anyanya too. So when he came, I was in Wow. I hear that he came, so I came and I met him on Kirkov. And he told me the story, that we are here to mobilize the gangs to build farm. I said no. I differed with him uh, to a point of shooting ourselves. Uh, it was good, Uncle uh, Deng Chier was there, who tried to... I told him, no, we cannot take any weapons from here to build farm. We thought that build farm supposed to give us weapons to come and fight the, the Musiri. How old were you? Uh, I was 20 years. So, and now I went back to where we differed, and then finally the Anyanyutu was formed. Uh, when I went, uh, I was in Korea. We went together with Mormor, but we left Mormor in Itang, and then we joined Korea in Bonga. Uh, and I was selected in 1984. I went to Addis Ababa in, in uh, in the, in the course, intelligent course. And then my first deployment was in Battalion 104-105 under the command of William Nguyen. Uh, that was my first battalion and we stayed there. Uh, what I can summarize on behalf of uh, the son of Abiyay, we have one, one shared uh, thing. The commitment to the war is a shared objective and nobody can pretend to be better than that. We are all equal. Uh, loyalty is, is very important. Uh, dedication to the cause is very important. So this what, these are the three things. What was your own personal uh, reasons for joining the war? Yeah, my, my personal reasons, number one, when I take it directly to, from my family, I lost my father when I was five, five years old. My father is no name is Luis Nyok. Maybe you see him sometimes. He's, he's put in the, in the commemoration of... He was, by that time, 1965, he was a member of what is called Jabhai Junub, together with Uncle Bono Malwal. Those are the Jabhai Junub, those who are calling for the suppression of South Sudan. Uh, my father was working from within, and uh, in the conspiracy of 1965, where most of the intellectuals were to be eliminated in South Sudan. He was a teacher. Uh, he was a teacher. In 1965, he was a senior overseer in Toyn Primary Schools. So he was among the, 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 the victims. He was assassinated in my eye watch. Uh, that, that one is one thing. The second issue, the issue of ABA, how we suffered in ABA, is a very big issue for me. So when I rebelled, I have in my mind the issue of my father, the issue of ABA, and the issue of South Sudan. Because in Buseri, we led two demonstrations. Uh, we led the demonstration in 1978 against the refinery of oil in Bentiu, the division of South Sudan, and the Sharia law. Uh, the secondary school were the, the one leading these demonstrations. In it, was 19 personal, it was personal reasons. And it was also collective. Actually, collective, exactly. So these things, the accumulation of all these things, give me no any other choice unless to join them. Thank you very much. Let me bring in uh, Ambassador uh, to speak about his own journey to the liberation 
and what were some of the reasons that angered him to be part of the struggle? Well, as I have narrated uh, the history of ABA in terms of the struggle and the suffering of the people of ABA, uh, I witnessed uh, those who are shot and died in ABA, uh, the practical witness I said, as an, a young man, it was 1975, when the fight took place and people were killed, including all our relatives. And we know that it is the Sudanese army who is killed them. As I said, Oad al Murahil, because they were based in Abiyai, but they go outside and they go and fight the citizen. Uh, that's one. Uh, that I have been a part of the suffering and seeing the killing. So, 1979, I joined the war, following those who were going to fight the Ptolemites. 1981, the Sudanese delegation led by the Vice President came to ABA with a, a delegation ministers from Juba went to ABA because they want to find out what is happening in ABA, why people are being killed. And that was when one major was killed in ABA, the Sudanese army major was killed. And the vice president have to come and see what is happening. Who is killing the army? And instead of asking who is killing the people, they were asking who is killing the army because the commander was killed. So when they came, we were in ABA and uh, we went on the demonstration and we encounter a confrontation between the army and, and the students in ABA in the presence of the delegation. That was including Dr. Francis, Dr. Uh, Minister Lualual, Lual, they were all there. Then came 1981, all the intellectuals of ABA, all over the South were collected and arrested in Khartoum. They were all collected. And I went to police station in Wau to go and give uh, a cigarette to this elders, my elders, and the police went and you let me uh, not to give them secret, not to give them water. It, it's, it's a direct touching me that uh, then 81 we went for demonstration as he said from 79 we have been demonstrating on the issues of the refinery, issue of the oil. When the issue of the redivision of the South came in, we went in and the first victim of the students was my direct brother, uh, Dambek Deng was shot by a bullet as a student in 1982, Fidakul Wau. He was the first victim of the students. And I just came with him from Abiyai. This, uh, all this accumulation, plus uh, General Kuala Romalek, who was a general, uh, one of the commanders in Green Tea, he used to give us ammunition in 1970 something and we take them to ABA. So we have been taking ammunition, we have been taking guns uh, through our uncle uh, Mianukol. So we have been in already part of war before the revolution of the SPL and SPL. How old were so you with all these accumulation. These experiences, no. How old were you and at what point did you decide that enough is enough? decided to formally join the struggle? Uh, after killing of uh, Dambek was an immediate where we decided that we should. So we have been going on and off. We go to Kirko. We got trained in 1982 with those appearing together. How old were you? I was uh, 16. And you were conscious about all the events? I was there. conscious with all the events because I was interacting with uh, intellectuals and I was a leader uh, of uh, my schools, our the school captain. Were you yeah. genuinely aggrieved, or was it an exciting experience for you? Because well, seeing the seeing the blood of somebody that has been shot by a gun, uh, and is your relative, and it is somebody walking because he has a gun. That's why he kill your relatives. It will make you angry, even if you are not killed by yourself. But killing your brother, it make you angry. Thank you. Seeing the suffering of the people, that's what motivated us to join the SPLM, SPLA, and 1984. And you, you connect to Bill Farm. I immediately I went to Bill Farm, uh, 1980, uh, end of 84, uh, earlier of uh, you 85. Went with more, more. I went 
I so went. What, what I, yes, more? I became more and more. I was g trained with Kazoo, but went down because uh, I was thin out as the first to go out down with more and more with Neran and B, who were going to Eastern Equatorial for mobilization. So I was asked to go and open an station in Firat because more and more was uh, passing and they need food. And I have to go and open the station there uh, as a signalist uh, so that I organize food for them. And that's how I went. Uh, to uh, to the front line from that time. Thank you, and Major General, your story Sir. of joining the liberation. Where did it begin, yeah, and in, what were your reasons? In fact, as I told you before, since '92, when Nabia was left behind, and the plebiscite was not conducted. The baby became in uh, trouble. Uh, we say the revolution, the Espera revolution, it started effectively in 1993. By then, uh, by then we were university students, and uh, we were conscious of what was taking place. And in fact, we were also introduced into this uh, political ideology. You know, those of Chol and Nidwalin and all that thing. There was this movement called NAM, National African Movement in South Sudan. And that one, in fact, made people to be aware of what was happening around them. In 83, a group of my colleagues who were with me together in the university thought that we should move away and join the movement immediately. Uh, those of uh, Dr. Ajak and uh, Dr. Uh, John Duart, he died, he's late now. They said we move in 84, let us join the movement immediately. And by then, I think we were in fifth year, about to finish. Then I told them, uh, it's not a wise idea to move. The fighting power is enough. But those who will go and help people, because when you fight, you will have wounded people, you will have people that need your help and all that shit. I told them, let us finish. They said, no, we are going. Because by then, in fact, uh, people thought it was something that will finish tomorrow or after tomorrow. Can't be Hamas Shadid. We resisted joining Fati 3. And we thought when we finish uh, our uh, course on the Faculty of Medicine, then after graduation, then we will go. We graduated in 85, knowing what we were supposed to do. But it became difficult, because by then the security became very tight. I did my internship in Khartoum. And uh, when I finished internship in 86, I was asked to be posted, I was about to be posted in uh, Gulf Sudan, in Darfur region there. Niala Hospital, in fact, that where I was supposed to be the first my post. Uh, then, by then there was this crisis over the end, where there was massacre. Then I said, no, I am not going to, to Niala. People were just massacred. And how do you expect that I will go and save people who have just massacred my people? I'm not going. They say, then we don't have another place for you to go. South Sudan is full of war. Rats and the people were uh, killed in Juba. In fact, there were two doctors killed in 87 around Jubehan. They say there is only one position 
that you can get in South Sudan, which is in Yuba. And you are disadvantaged. The first thing, the rebellion is very active there. The second one, people don't like Dinkas. I said, no. That is the place that I want to go to. And I said it like that because I know when I come to Juba, I will be close to the rebellions. And any immediate chance, then it will be a chance for me now to follow this step. I came, in fact, and uh, I was very much friendly to people of Juba here because I was in Juba since 79. Uh, I was not strange. Everything was smooth, but in fact, it was very difficult to move out in Juba. Some people tried, but they end up being killed. It was in 90, during the start, or bright start campaign. Then, in fact, soldiers, and in fact, we I was in contact with those of Owen Alor, who can solve Jesus Sudan, and they were here in Yuba. Before I told him, let us go, he said, no, we cannot move without our weapon. Then I say, when? Say, when there is opportunity, then we will go. I was, in fact, a TA in Juba University. And I was taken to go and do my first, to start my first course, master's degree. Then I was posted to her room. I stayed there. When the bride start campaign start, then I move immediately. I know those soldiers will have their guns. That 97? No. The first base. Two. Yeah, 90. Then we came and I got them. In fact, they were ready. I got Dr. Mingwir in Yuba. Uh, Dr. Mingwir asked me, what is your plan? I said, I'm just coming to visit. But he was going to Khartoum. But if I don't come back to Khartoum, then know that I am not coming. You see, the opportunity was there. We could manage to get five soldiers. And then uh, my weir and myself, there was other cousin of mine, a Dolomitian, who yeah. died also, and there was a student. The total was nine in number. We passed through the enemy line itself, mm -hmm. you know, through this Jebel, Kujur and all that thing, where they were having their patrolling. Were you mindful of the yeah. risk? Uh, no, we were mindful of the risk, but we have advantage that those five soldiers, some of them were on duty on that day. So they know password, they know everything, you see. We passed through them, and we managed to come out successfully. In fact, uh, summary. as I told you that uh, say, when the revolution started, I was a university student, then we were singing in an objective way. We were singing of the whole Sudan rather than the South Sudan. And in fact, the ideology of SPLA, the manifesto, captured our attention. And we were happy with it. We were happy to liberate the whole Sudan. And even when I joined, I know it is the liberation war that is going to liberate the whole Sudan. Thank you. And, and we will come back. And let me uh, come back to you, General Commander. You were part and parcel of the revolution. Your story about how you joined. Well, uh, I don't know where to start because I'm getting overwhelmed. Uh, by emotions of where to start, even. Um, as my colleagues here were just explaining, uh, that place, uh, uh, the environment, 
as always, uh, unless you are not uh, having feelings as human being, but as human being, what you see in the suffering of the people, people being oppressed, being killed, atrocity and be committed, uh, will, can always move any human being who is living. So I was already moved by all the atrocities they have just said I wouldn't want to, to go back to repeat it, but I have seen that for my life, because these are younger brothers, all of them, they are younger than me. What they could see, uh, yes, but I could see it in a larger scope. That was one. Number two, uh, also having uh, being associated with uh, revolutionary uh, schools, uh, back even in the second, in the intermediate school, we met some people who were really very instrumental in, in, in introducing me to a new type of thinking, a new type of life. I remember Judge uh, uh, Manuda Tagdit from, actually is from uh, one, uh, one more. He was a member of the Communist Party. Uh, and in 68, 69, he introduced me to explain to me the life of the socialist country, of the socialist people, and how people talk about equality uh, and all of this. All these things attracted me. And when I take it and put it at home, where the oppression is being exercised against our people, I thought that was the best solution for our people. And if it is for our people, let it be for the whole Sudan. Because the whole Sudan historically belongs to us, and we should not be leaving it to anybody. So, uh, uh, I, I did my secondary school at a place called Hantup, Hantup Secondary School, one of the prestigious schools of, uh, of Sudan. But that was also a, a place where a lot of politics were being talked about. Many of these uh, presidents of Sudan actually graduated from that school. Uh, here, 80, uh, I, as I was stepping into the question of liberation of OBA last time, uh, uh, we've, we thought with all these atrocities also and we were knocking at all the doors trying to get a solution here in Juba there was a regional government uh, high executive council with the regional assembly and the issue of yeah, if it is raised uh, people said I can't, please please leave it because this will take us back to war so some people were very happy with the newly acquired position, uh, after the Addis Ababa agreement, uh, some became directors, a thing they never dreamed of. Some became ministers. Some were the, the petty bourgeois were very comfortable uh, with this type of life. And uh, uh, they didn't take serious attention to, to the suffering of the people. And uh, 80, 80, 80, 81, Luk Yowe, he was, he was saying, started something and he was he became a martyr in, in, in uh, September look your way in September that was in 1881 80, uh, September 81 he was killed uh, and then shortly Miokol as he was saying picked it up here and we had then a BA liberation movement we also were organized people and actually we were encouraging Governor Pian came from from Khartoum uh, University it was second uh, year uh, engineering. It was a very brilliant, promising uh, future. But because of the cause of the people he came, uh, he went, and for this also, you have to remind me of calling our late uncle Bruno Mawinu Kual. Uh, though he was really uh, paralyzed because he had an accident, he was paralyzed. But he was able, he was managing, he was actually our own patron. He was uh, advising us what to do with all these things. So when Pian came, uh, went to Bruno, uh, confined to him, and that I, I'm going to, to go to Bar Gazal to join Anyanya too. He said, you go first to Chul, because I was responsible for military affairs. Then Alor was there also with us in the same organization. We were, as he, he was saying, then Alor, Edward Lino, uh, led uh, Charles Kirde uh, uh, these were the people. And we had our brother also who died last 
some, some years ago also, uh, Malaya Alor, brother of, uh, of Deng Alor, uh, Malaya Alor Kualchul, was with us also in the same. So we were known socialist uh, group, and we were for the change to take place. We were, we were for the change to take place. We were, well, I, I, I was one of the two people who attended International Youth, the Democratic Youth Festival in Cuba, 78. 78, one is Majong Majok, Dr. Majong Majok, who died later on, uh, was another person. So anyway, when all these things happened, and arrests took place, as they were mentioning, oh, arresting Omar Mohammed, Mohammed Tayyip gave orders at the Talimat, and no, يقبضوا كل أبناء انتلكشوال بتعربية يقبضون فقبضون في جنوب هنا قبضوا ناس أنا it is a chance for me to thank somebody called ماني ماني مايكا ماني مايكا كان شغال في سيكوريتي هنا so he would he would tell me كل كذا أدم أقوله أنا أزبرين يقبضون يقبضون بالليل أنا نقوم نجري في مال نقوم من هنا I will fly to 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 wow وناس جماعة ناس مكير بنجم بدوم هنا يقول يا مكير بنجم يقول يا شو لي تعاد how do you avoid this arrest but now I have people whom I know تمالك تكمان عملك ناس عشان تقدر تطلع من المشاكل ده in short في الارس جنرال on a slot بالنسبة لنوك ودوم في 82 ده I succeeded to avoid to avoid that one and uh, due to, to, to assistance and support from people like Mani Maika. Uh, then, Alor, then there was this uh, rebellion which took place, a fight, fight which took place 16 May. Uh, we were in contact with Deng Alor. Deng Alor came from Khartoum. He was uh, third secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, we talked. Of course, we knew what we were doing for quite the time. I was also a member in NAM, National Action Movement, uh, apart from being a member of the Socialist or the Communist Party, for that matter. I resigned from the Communist Party in 1980 uh, because of also what I thought was double standard, because some members in the Communist Party were not treating the, the situation of the South as it should be, they, some of them will appear, will appear are more, are, as, there was no are more, and there was no equality. yeah, and they were, they were also not, they were appearing, what you can call uh, the pan Arabish, they uh, come in Arab, instead of being uh, socialist, a socialist, a real socialist, a real socialist, is a, is a denationalized, is a detribalized person, but they were not in those days, but because of that, uh, we felt that we should map our own course separately. And we were now in a big cooperation with the National Action Movement, NAM. Uh, by the way, a lot of intellectuals, yeah, and you have people like uh, uh, Benjamin Bullock Hawk, uh, people like uh, late uh, Baba Africa, he was a member. Uh, I don't know whom should I call. Uh, uh, Uncle Joseph Odo was there. Uh, Joseph Malas, Joseph were there. Uh, uh, and so many others. And many, many. For the sake of time. Uh, now, in 1980, uh, uh, my 19, so in 1982, uh, 1983, after the incident of war, by the fight in war, and then Deng Alor, when he came, we agreed, Anagultolo, Anamashi, Malakal. I was transferred to Malakal by then. Because I was an engineer, I was transferred from Malakal to manage the river transport. So, I'm going to tell them, Lord, this is a chance. Let us go to Malakal, from Malakal, uh, we go. Deng was hesitant because she wanted to travel by air. Deng Alor. Galnamshi, Nairobi, Nairobi, we go to Addis. I'm going to tell them, Kaiwe <laughs> 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 
كيني دل رشوم شوية قروش كده حكومة سودانية النازل وير إنجكتيد بمنوم شالوم بطيا ببينا الخرطوم في زينا ودوم خرطوم ملاحظ ما مشى صح جو خرطوم قلت له do you want to go and work and find yourself in cover don't do that this will be a big mistake then Allah let's go to 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 Malakal and we and we and he said okay let me give me some time you will go before that we went to James Waniga he was here working in the Ministry of he was working with the Juba Insurance Company Mashena we told him Muse as well Mashakel fi Ara Gala ene ne bro kwais Mashena le wadi su kalam en katinya mina ulad morle kan fi kan garati yala Bardo. Machine, we started mobilizing people here. Shani, machine, nemshi. And with him, yom wahid sita, yom wahid sita. Ana gumte me tayare min hene min juba. Machine malakal. That was the very day Zola ismo ismo sadigal bana was co. We make an operation against Buma, operation to Buma. No so pagana mom and nyachigang nyashuluk la la kurnyang lado. They had captured Buma. They were uh, what they call South Sudan Liberation Front, and they had captured Buma, Okidak. So Sadiq Al Banna was uh, transporting forces by Matar by Tajubada, I shall name Shili Buma for for operation. I know Gumta Minam Salio Minena, Mashed Malakal. In Malakal, uh, I waited as I said six days, and Legit Nas Yemusus Garoz Mai. And as the call them about his elder brother to Ambassador Arup, who were kind of kind of in Malakal, they were just secondary school leavers by then. For our machine, legitimate them also already contacts no more good with the cells with our South Sudan Liberation Front, with our as with our as Wagara Mumde. Can in the home cells organized. So we organized and we left, 17 of us, we left together in Malakal. That's myself, those who are here now, and Kennedy guy, in, if you know somebody by name, left with us together by the Kualdeng Abunda. He was a small child, a mom, Jamaat from Abad, the country she was in, and then we were in the in different nationalities. Bitana Tash House. We were 17. I was the elder among them. So we moved from Malaka. We moved from Malaka. When we crossed from Ajuba, from Beratan, from Badanagdiar, when we moved there, we were in the garden. So we told them, let us organize ourselves. We are going and we are going to form a movement. There was nothing called by then SPLM, SPLM. And at that point, were you all and Yanya too? No, no. I was an engineer here, and I was a member of the <laughs> National Liberation. You, you were united by the objectives. By uh, all of them, they were, we were there going anyway uh, to uh, this direction because there is a chances of people either in Bilfam, we get people, and we organize uh, to fo to form to fight the war, fight the war. Now, I was now trying to talk to them. Min Juba, Min Ajuba. Yeah, and when you cross Anagdia, I told them, from here, now we are still in area of Shuluk. We have just come out of area of Shuluk, and you have missed your chance, Chwila Mom. But from here, it will be somebody from Dingo who will be responsible, who will be our leader. The Hadiva, when we go to Pantau, then James Wos will become the leader. What was the destination? We were going to build farm. So, uh, uh, I told them I will be a political commissar for them. This was the first time they had something. This called. is a detailed story that we will explore, but in summary. Because in summary, we, we went, and then when we, we went to Bill Farm, we were again arrested. I don't know. This is the Are you interested in this? Or not? I don't know. <laughs> because when we went to Bill Farm itself, even on the way, there were some. You left from Malakal to Bill Farm. Uh, yeah, let's, supposedly. Let's yeah. keep it there for now. This is Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building a new nation. I am Madengor, and with us in the studio, warriors from a BIA 
from the SPLA revolutionary struggle 1983-2005. We take a break from here and with us, our ambassador, engineer, Chol Deng Alak, veteran SPLA commander, Major General, Dr. Kual Deng Kual, Director of Administration, Central Area Command, Bill Farm, SSPDF General Headquarters. Ambassador Dr. Arup Denkwal, CEO, Triangle Real Estate, and former ambassador to Ethiopia, Brigadier General Kual Nyong Kual, Shiptancy, Military Intelligence, and, and Director, Strategic Intelligence, SSPDF General Headquarters. We will come back for the final round. This is an honorary poem. It is dedicated to our liberators, both the soldiers and the civilians. And now, listen. I honored you, our veterans. I honored you from 1955 to 1972, and of 1983 to 2005. I salute those who are alive, and I respect and honor those who are dead. May their souls rest in glory. Because without you, they would have no gain of a victory. And for your certainty, it's the fight of humanity. Justice, liberty, and prosperity comes as land of unity. And behold, South Sudan is a home of a veteran soul with no doubt. Heroes and heroines, you are the torch and the light of this nation. Due to starvation, you will own. You defend our nation. You defend our nation with love and humanity that was built inside you. So, comrade, come out of Al Kupa Vidar. Kam Belila. U kam Ambre. Al Takunako no Mudun Mula. Unu Fikaba Fikanadi. Mudun Messia. Mudun Moyeni Div. Hile Besu. Waja Chade Chabi. Yao Kan Maru. Lakini Takuma Sibu. Ashanena Biligo. Uriya Zehanena. So Shukran. Shukran is our veterans. Shukran mindum takun al kubu, ashan belep jinubu sudan. And even though some losses their lives and left wounded, you will never be forgotten, but remain as a hero for the victory and the freedom that you brought to us. I am a South Sudanese soldier. I am the face and the eye of my country. For Shukran. And the Dubu Milo, you are from Mogaraya, Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingwar. With us in the program are Ambassador, Engineer, General Chol Deng Alak, Veteran, SPLA Commander, Major General Dr. Kual Deng Kual, Director of Administration, Central Area Command, Bill Farm, Ambassador Dr. Arup Deng Kual, CEO Triangle Real Estate, 
and former ambassador to Ethiopia, Brigadier General Kwal Nyong Kwal, Chieftaincy Military Intelligence, Bill Farm, SSPDM General Headquarters. We are summarizing commemoration 16 May 1983-2005. The heroes that made the liberation possible and ultimately the independence appear fought from the beginning to the end. The are stakeholders and there are dilemmas about its status is fully is still not fully resolved and what can they say about the future of a BA going forward? You have the floor. What will ultimately end the suffering of a BA with the status not being fully defined? Uh, thank you very much, Madin. Uh, this is a very important point, and for me, uh, this point is very important because this is what everybody is looking for. Uh, for me, I request and I ask the final status of ABA. I would like to ask our parliament and our government to endorse the community referendum that was done by the people of ABA in 2013. It was done transparently, uh, very clearly, without any, any doubt. I only hope if our legislative assembly and the government to endorse that referendum. The issue of that, that the Arab will not accept it, that is another issue. Let us exhaust the process of the ABA referendum to the, to the end. Let the South Sudan Legislative Assembly and the government adopt it and it will be up to the Arabs, the, up to the Khartoum government to accept it or not. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Uncle Abel Elier wrote a book, Too Many Agreements Dishonored, is more so in the case of a PA. Many agreements, referendum, dishonored. What is the final solution in your view? The final solution is the program itself, fixing South Sudan, uh, is fixing the problem of VA itself. Uh, as a CEO of uh, for economic development and for the infrastructure development, liberation was for the development. And the reason why I call it triangle because I have finished the military part liberations, I finished the diplomatic relations. Uh, that's why South Sudan recognized a sovereign country. But we are left with another liberation, which is the development. And South Sudan uh, development should include the development in ABA, and that is part of the liberation. So, for total ABA liberation to take place, political liberation is under process, as my brother says the recognition of the parliament but as a development connecting ABA uh, with Gogrial today which was the reason why ABA was next to the to the north today there's a bridges from Gogrial to ABA and there's no any barrier that can allow ABA to be cut off we need ABA to be connected to a wheel we need ABA to be connected to Bentiu if we do the bell uh, one road connection that will be a security road then we have totally liberated the ba so development is a part of the liberation uh, that i see that the ba can be liberated thank you very much and major general the same question for you uh -huh. what how will freedom look like for the ba people you know uh, this issue of ABA has become very long. Since 64, the sound of gun did not stop up to date. At this South Sudan has, been, has had some interlude in between the wars, but ABA has continued. He has mentioned this ABA have decided they have their unilateral referendum. And it's a refer referendum of people. People have decided. 
And I don't see any reason why it is not being recognized. To me, a recognition of the referendum of ABA is a must. People have to recognize it. What if the recognition is But to if the word? recognition is delayed, the fear mm. that the recognition may lead to another civil war. Well, you know, uh, I don't know how do we define war. <laughs> because for us, there's a war already. The war is there. There is no war that people should be frightened with. War is when you kill people with gun, you kill people with fear. It's a war. There must be a way of stability in the whereby people who are BA should enjoy peace. And that one will be through final status. In fact, the issue is very simple. Final status is for the people to decide. But we should not confuse the resource management of the area with this final status. Let Sudan and South Sudan negotiate on the resources management in the but not the final status. We request that he said before. That is part of self determination. Uh, yeah, the government of, the people yeah, of Abia. Yeah, the government of South Sudan should recognize the referendum, unilateral referendum. Thank you. And General Choldeng Alak, when you went to the bush and you fought, it was to free your people, and after the independence of South Sudan, the people of Abia are still not free. And now you are an old man. How do you take that? And what will it take for freedom to come to Abia? One good thing is that uh, you have uh, made an eye opening about this issue for some of the people are not very much aware about the contribution of the people of Abia in all the national liberation movements, which uh, happened, as I was saying. And in particular, to what the SPLM, SPLA formation, we were very instrumental, and I feel very much this, we have not said a substantial part about the participation of this formation of the movement, which is called SPLM, SPLA. It was Edward Lino, late Edward Lino. After when people, after the fighting, which took place in, in Bor, and Dr. John was now on his own way to, to Ethiopia. The communication which was done from Khartoum to Addis Ababa, which informed Kenan Mangisto about that there are, there are people who are coming. It is Edward Lino, who went to the, uh, to the embassy of the uh, Ethiopian uh, uh, Republic, Federal Republic of Ethiopia, and talked to a uh, consul who was called Ismail, uh, the one who was responsible for security, telling them there is a group of people who are coming, and among them is a colonel. That colonel is our person. That means he belonged to a socialist group. And that's why when the plane came to pick the, the delegation, the people who went, they were ministers. A quarter team was there, Samuel Gaitud was there, Abdullah Chual was there, and many others. Those who were ministers, they thought that being politicians and being people known before, they thought they were going to people to be uh, acknowledged. But the first acknowledgement came directly to Colonel John Garang, being uh, somebody who was oriented to the direction of the socialist uh, group, and he was picked. That was a contribution from a uh, son of, of, of Abiyai. Uh, when I also came, I joined, we had all the communication from socialist countries, uh, and we had the support, and we organized many things, which you are saying, it is a time will come when we will talk about it, but it is very important to state this statement. You can see uh, Anyanya too, which came to support later on, mainly it is Abiyai people who organized it. You can see when the ideological support came, from many countries later on, it was also people from ABA who did it. When we have actually a very shaky position, after when, for me, when, we, when we form the, the movement and we acknowledge uh, 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 a quarter attempt 
as the leader. By the way, the first leader of the movement was Akwada Atem Damayan. Because of uh, uh, But now we're talking about who should be the one responsible for the army. And we, and we, as a group, we say it should be Dr. John. And they were saying, no, they are one tribe. Uh, 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 Kwada Atem and Dr. John are one tribe. We were saying they are not one tribe. You are tribe of the politicians, we are tribe of the army. So we, we, we refused that and we insisted. And this is the role also we played as a people from Abia. We played a very important role in this aspect. And therefore, I would, I would, I would, it would be very unfortunate for this war to have been fought at this length uh, with all the sacrifices being given by many people of the South. ABA included, they have also paid equally for that. And then for ABA to be, for the second time, be excluded from the peace deal which took place. My, uh, my, my, my uh, request is very, very identical, is very, is very specific. Uh, it is our president. This goes to our president. It's our president to say, yes, the referendum, which he authorized. He was the one who authorized it. Who sent us to, to Abiy? I was called from Moscow. I, I was ambassador of South Sudan to Moscow, by the way. And I was called from Moscow to go and attend the referendum. And when we did the ref referendum, which was 99.9% .9 supporting rejoining uh, or becoming part of South Sudan, we expected our president who sent us to endorse, to endorse this, uh, this referendum. It is very unfortunate that the, the question you just posed, that if, about, if, if it takes us to war, why did we go to war in the first place? We went to war to solve the problems, not to come out of the war. We were not afraid of war. We were afraid of problems not resolved. For us, for the problem to be resolved, if it takes people to war, it should be the case. And this is what Dr. John Garang said exactly. And what about those who say it is a, a small uh, territory compared to the other territories that are under South Sudan? Do you feel that some of the people of South Sudan are torn deaf about Abia and why? No, it, I would call it that is a betrayal. If you say that people who have been fighting with you and you say, I have got mine, I don't mind, I don't care about you. It's just like if we are drowning and I got saved, and I could have given a hand to you to save you. And I say, no, after all, I'm safe. Uh, you see, let him do his. Yeah. So this is the case I with the BIA. Given birth, so yeah. why do I care about who is supposed to come? Yeah, why would I care? Would you concur with what the ambassador was saying, that fixing a BIA is fixing South Sudan? Exactly. The, uh, ultimate fixing of Exactly, and, 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 and what he said at the very beginning, that our allegiance to this very government, and by the way, is not conditional, is unwavering, is the position which we believe. This president was elected popularly, popularly. And nobody should claim any other position. Let us wait for the people to... To come, to come and, and, and contest whatever we want to contest through the, the people. The president should stand by the BI people. Because, because that is what I believe, what he stands for and should have been. If there are other people who are confusing him, let them stop confusing him. And that should bring us to a logical debate about the theme, warriors from BI, the contributions of BI historically and to the liberation struggle. I thank the panel, uh, Ambassador, Engineer, General Chol Deng Alak, Major General Dr. Kual Deng Kual, Ambassador Dr. Arup Deng Kual, and Brigadier General Kual Nyong Kual. Thanks for coming to Fixing South <laughs> Zel watan, zel watan, zel nainu manei. Zel watan, zel watan, zel nainu manei. Otal, 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 le tari batu. Si butal, otal, 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 le tari.
الوطن زي الوطن زي زي الوطن زي الوطن زي 